types of vaccines. In this, we will be considering third generation vaccines. So let us look at the learning outcomes of the session. Uh, so the third generation vaccine approach is basically to inject the DNA or the RNA directly and the DNA or the RNA that it would be coding for an antigenic peptide or, or the antigen itself and this approach has been especially used for viral pathogens. The DNA or RNA on being taken up by the host cells, uh, the host cells will synthesize the proteins on their own and present it on the surface which will elicit cell-mediated immunity. This is important. Many viral vectors are used to enhance the immunogenicity of the DNA or RNA that it is carrying. The DNA or RNA being present within the cells should be able to expose the immune system, the immunogen for a longer duration because you have the DNA and RNA present, it will be continuously synthesizing the product and therefore the product would be present in the system, in the human system or in the host system for a longer period of time. And that helps in creating an immunological memory. So say for example, this is the antigen that is going to be used for uh, uh, immunization. That means uh, uh, the vaccine is basically looking at producing an uh, immune response against this antigen. And that is present uh, in this pathogen. So what is done is, that the DNA of this pathogen is taken, uh, is isolated. The gene which gives rise to this antigen is isolated. And then this gene is uh, incorporated into a viral genome. So it is, it is put into a virus. Uh, so this is what is then called as recombination with viral genome. And uh, the virus that is selected should be non-pathogenic to the host. That is important. Otherwise, this virus is going to cause a disease in the host. Uh, so instead of acting as a vaccine, it will act as an um, infectious uh, virus. So uh, it, the virus that is going to be used, this virus is basically a vector. So this virus that is going to be used as a vector should be one that is not infectious to the host. That is very important to take note of. Now, this virus can be administered into the human and when it enters into the human, like we know, viruses through transduction enter cells. Once they enter the cell, the virus is going to multiply within the cell. So as it multiplies, what is going to happen is the gene that is there for the particular antigen will get expressed as well. So you would have uh, transcription and translation of the genes happening. So your antigen will be produced inside the cell. And that antigen can be presented on the surface through MHC class 1. Also, what can happen is that the antigen itself can be uh, expressed directly on the surface of the cell. And then this can be recognized by B cells. So since they are basically pathogen-associated molecular patterns, any immune cell that has a um, pattern recognition receptor can come and bind. And then you will have an immune response elicited accordingly. So you may have both B cell as well as T cell um, uh, getting activated. So you will basically uh, have both humoral as well as cellular mediated immunity getting enhanced. Now to go into recombinant vector vaccine, let us consider we are using a vaccinia uh, vaccine, the vaccinia virus as the vector. So what is done is that the plasmid uh, contains a thymidine kinase gene. Why is the ty thymidine kinase gene used? Because the thymidine kinase, kinase gene is present in the vaccinia virus as well. So there can be homologous recombination. Since this is present and you have a, a, th a thymidine kinase present in the vaccinia virus, uh, the exchange of this gene with this gene can happen. And of course, within the TK gene is present a vaccinia promoter and the restriction endonucleus cleavage site. So at this point, you can have the DNA encoding the antigen from the pathogen getting inserted. So now you have the plasmid with the insert. So this becomes a recombinant plasmid. Now this recombinant plasmid and the virus are inoculated together. So this plasmid would get into the vaccinia virus. And as it gets into the vaccinia virus, there is homologous recombination. So the vaccine or virus basically will lose, lose its own TK, but in, in, instead it will get the gene from the pathogen within it. Uh, so with that, therefore, what happens is you are getting a recombinant vaccine or vector that is carrying the DNA from the 
uh, DNA from the pathogen and specific for a particular antigen. So you can see how you are creating a recombinant vector vaccine. So several such uh, recombinant vectors can be used. Vaccinia virus is of course the most common one used, but one can also use adenovirus, uh, canary pox virus, attenuated polio virus, and in fact, one also uses attenuated mycobacterium bovis, that is the BCG uh, strain can be also used because in an attenuated form, it can carry and it can go inside a cell. Therefore, it can carry a particular gene of interest that against who we need the immune response to take place. Vaccine virus, in fact, is so very easy to administer as well because by just scratching the skin with vaccine virus, it can just enter and then it can elicit the immune response per se. It causes a localized infection, which is which is what is needed because with localized infection, you know that the active immune cells are getting active and it would not just create a, or develop a humoral mediated immunity, it will also develop a cell mediated immunity per se. So DNA vaccines are also a type of third generation vaccine and now one can see that this is also being used for developing vaccines for COVID. So these are plasmids carrying the gene of the antigenic peptides. So for example, you have created a plasmid which has the gene for the antigenic peptide and then this plasmid is transformed into a cell. Once it gets transformed into a cell, two things happen. Number one, that the gene of the antigen is expressed and uh, into uh, its particular protein and this protein can be released. So once this protein is released and is in circulation, it can be recognized by B cell receptor, bind to B cell receptor that would activate Th2 cytokines. So there will be antigen binding uh, which triggers release of uh, cytokines, the T helper cell and the MHC class 2 will and there will be humoral immune response being formed. So basically what you will have is that these B cells on getting activated will form plasma cells which will produce the antibodies against this particular antigen and also in the process create immunologic memory. So you can see how you have humoral mediated immunity getting uh, developed. Now second thing that can happen is that this antigenic peptide once it is produced can also be broken down into small antigenic peptides through what we know as phagolysosomes and it can be expressed on the surface through MHC class 1. Now this MHC class 1 with the antigenic peptide would be recognized by T helper cells and the T cell receptor. This in turn will get activated and once it gets activated you would find that the T cells are going to give rise to cytotoxic T lymphocytes and also memory T cells. So you can very well see how the DNA vaccine is going to elicit a humoral mediated immunity as well as a cellular mediated immunity because through this it is binding to the B cells and the B cells act as the antigen presenting cell thereby activating it to form plasma cells and memory cells while in this case uh, because it is expressed on the surface through MHC class 1 T cells are getting activated. So uh, when uh, there's two things that is important to note. One is that the plasmid can get incorporated into the chromosomal DNA. That is one thing. Or it can exist as an episome itself. Uh, the gene would definitely get expressed and presented on the surface or and it can also be released as a protein as observed. Okay. So the dendritic cells also uh, take up the plasmid and present it. So there is a double uh, you know, uh, uh, presentation happening one by the cell that is getting infected and the other by the dendritic cells itself. So, uh, and interestingly, DNA vaccines can just be put in the, into the, uh, in, is, can be injected intramuscular and the muscle cells can take, up, take up the plasmid. So, the protein is expressed in its natural conformation because it is, uh, it is pr uh, expressed inside a cell and both humoral and cell mediated immunity is induced. Now one also has RNA vaccines, vaccines as a third generation vaccine. So in this case what is done is that mRNA itself is introduced into the host cell and these mRNA are of two types that is one can one is what is called as non-replicating mRNA so it is 
it is the it is the processed mrna that one has five prime cap five prime utr you have the uh, open reading frame you have the three prime cap and then the poly a tail this can be introduced into the cell or you can use a self amplifying mrna and this self amplifying mrna other than the same construct also has a replicase gene so that replicase gene will allow the mrna to form multiple copies of itself now both these can be introduced into the cell through uh, using lipid nanoparticles so the mrna is present within the liposome and this liposome is then taken up through endocytosis and once it is present inside the mrna is released into the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are going to translate it and from the ex express protein this express protein then can be uh, through um, uh, the lysosomes get degraded into smaller peptides and can be presented as mhc uh, presented by mhc class 1 so you have the antigenic peptide uh, ex exposed on the surface through mhc class 1 or secondly the protein can just be uh, expressed uh, Uh, can just be uh, you know put on the surface of the uh, membrane so when it is put on the surface of the membrane this acts as a uh, molecular pattern which can be recognized by many cells or it can be secreted out so when it is secreted out again you can have circulating uh, b cells or other immune cells uh, recognizing this as foreign and getting activated so you can see how you can have three pronged activation of the immune system one as a mhc class 1 um express uh, presented peptide this is recognized by t helper cells so a cell mediated immunity can be generated the surface protein can be recognized by several uh, macrophages or b lymphocytes etc uh, the the released uh, uh, protein can also be uh, recognized by several uh, dendritic cells etc and therefore these can be presented on the surface through mhc class 2 and when they are expressed through mhc class 2 we know that the humoral mediated immunity is uh, elicited so you can see how t cells get active in this and because t cells get activated we have a very strong immunogenic response and also a good immunologic memory so rna vaccines today are definitely one of the major uh, you know um, researched uh, vaccines especially with the um, covid situation people are trying to uh, have vaccines using the rna itself then of course what we mean by self amplifying rna is that you can get multiple copies of the rna which in turn gets translated into multiple copies of the protein antigen and that elicits an amplified immune response so therefore that is a bonanza so self amplifying mrnas increase the number of antigenic peptides which increases immunogenicity so let us make the conclusions the third generation vaccine strategically lead to production of the antigen inside the host itself to ensure long duration of exposure due to the production of the antigenic peptide intracellularly the mhc class 1 can present the peptides on the surface eliciting cell mediated response recombinant vector vaccines comprise vectors that carry within its genome the gene for the antigenic peptide but the vector virus should be non pathogenic that is something that is important DNA and RNA vaccines are designed to introduce the DNA or RNA encoding the protein directly into the recipient cells. Delivery systems are carefully planned. So basic understanding of gene expression and biotechnology interventions have enabled design vaccines that are able to give faster and long lasting immune response. A nascent study that is burgeoning in the vaccination domain. Thank you.